Hello and uh, welcome to the Shinhan Tank Pro League. You are listening to Kix, your cast of the day. Um, I had a lot of technical issues moving into this game, so uh, that puts us quite behind schedule, so I'll need to work pretty quickly to catch up with myself. But um, today we are looking at a match between Khan and Oz, two of the two other teams that have shown themselves to be quite strong throughout the entire tournament. Uh, Khan has actually won their first game um, in this season. Oz have yet to play, this is going to be their first game, uh, so this is going to be quite interesting. A very interesting matchup. We have a, a very good spread of matches as well. We do start off with a TVP, head on to a, a ZVP, go to a PVP, have a PVT, and then uh, for the base, if it gets to it, we'll have another, or the first TVP, or a rematch between Hire and Stork if it gets that far. So we've been, uh, we got a good, good selection of matches here for you today. Um, I'm still trying to catch up with myself, so hold on. I do apologize. How very unprofessional of me, but here we go. So, uh, we're gonna... Okay, why is this not working? This is going great today. It really is. <laughs> Right, okay, so I can't for some reason host this specific replay, but uh, I can load it through single player, so that, that's good. Right, okay, we're gonna move move on through the screens as we all uh, normally do, and then uh, we'll see if we can fix the other issues as we go along. So of course, uh, hold on, checking the maps we have today, we start off on Central Plains, a map we've not seen yet so far. Uh, the last two games did finish before that got to it, and um, one of them was a walkover. Uh, due to a thing which has happened with stars, which I'll explain at the end of today. Uh, we move on to Benzene and Circuit Breaker. Uh, then we go for a TVP on um, Empire of the Sun and finish up with another TVP on Fortress if we get to that point. So, as I said, interesting set of matches and uh, we're going to go in and show off the players and then we'll get going. So uh, your first player, no this is completely wrong, this should be Hire vs Stork, so yeah, hold on. Okay, so yeah, your first player here is going to be Hire, he is your Terran, and uh, Oz is ace player for today if he gets that far. He's proven himself to be quite strong, he got to the round of 4 of the uh, Vectors off Game Net Star League, uh, losing 2 boxer there, so quite unlucky for him, the bots are up in the, the individual thread for that on TL, so if you want to check that out, please feel free. Let me just check that I'm A recording my mic's working, yes it is. So uh, yeah, Hire actually winning one of his games, uh, or winning his only game he's played in the Pro League, so have, hasn't really shown his full strength yet in Pro League, but um, he will probably show it today, I would imagine, as he is quite a strong player, but the player who is going to sit there and try and defeat him in this is Stork. I don't have a picture of Stork yet, sillyly enough. Uh, this is Stork's debut match across everything. He didn't play in the off Net Star League, and uh, he didn't get a chance to play last week in, the, um, in Khan's first game, so... Stork, of course, in real life was a very strong player, and it'll be very interesting to see if the, the player Khan picked for Stork is going to be uh, good enough to live up to his name. And uh, that's obviously going to be something that he's going to want to do, so if we move on to look at the map stats, Circuit Breaker, not been used much in Pro League so far. Only one game actually recorded, and that was a TBC in which the Terran won. So, um... We're gonna we're gonna see how PVT plays out on this map. Of course, uh, Circuit Breaker in or outside of this tournament is very very popular. It's a very relative it's a relatively balanced map that that's used across all the tournaments. Uh, more recently, it was used in SSL nine, and I can't remember if it's in SSL ten or not. I think it might be, but uh, yeah, it's it's a very popular map. 
very strong options for all three races. There is of course this uh, mineral only base here and you have your fourth gas either down here or down here or unless you take another main uh, which uh, often does. But um, yeah, uh, it's going to be very interesting set games for you today. So, uh, well, there's going to be so many more interesting that I'll have to explain after the first game if uh, I don't get contact from someone soon. So uh, we're going to move on, we're going to show the intro and let's get moving. Once again. Here we go. So uh, yeah, as you can see we do have both the players ready, I'm just setting up the stuff behind the screen. Uh, we're not going to have... Um, we're not going to have uh, every screen right now because um, I do actually have to start from in-game uh, as I couldn't host this outside of single player. So uh, here we go, we do see the set image there. That's going to be a, a mainstay of course from every other broadcast I've done. And uh, we're going to get going. Uh, there's, there's not going to be a countdown sadly, but uh, we do get to see, or we do get to hear the probes moving along. Which is, of course, uh, very, very cool. And uh, I need to make sure I'm showing the game. That would also help. And there we have it. So in the top half of your screen, uh, in the oh, I, I can't do this like I do a multiplayer, but here we go. In the top half, the white Protoss, we do have Samsung Khan, Stork, very strong player in real life. Interesting to see if the player playing under his alias is going to be uh, comparatively good, of course. These are Team Liquid amateur players. The thread is up on Team Liquid if you wish to go and view it. Um, I just need to check. My stream is not set to the event, annoyingly enough, so here we go. I'm going to sort that out just while this loads. Most players wishing each other a hearty good luck, have fun. Always nice to see. And uh, down here, in the, I'd say, 7 o'clock position, we do have Huasing Oz's Higher. Higher, once again, uh, Higher, a very, very strong player in real life right now, is doing uh, quite well. Uh, the, he was playing today in the SSL round of 16. I won't spoil that, of course, but uh, it's very worth going to check out those games. And um, this Higher, of course, is a Team Liquid community member, as with everyone else. I will quickly... I really do need to find a way to link my threads in my stream uh, concurrently, but there we go. I just linked it in case you're watching and you don't know what this tournament's all about. But uh, yeah, this is our first game and um, we're getting it moving. So uh, it looks like Stork has been rather lucky and is actually going to scout out um, scout out higher, very like higher first. This is a very big map and uh, it's actually very very awkward. Uh, there's four corners of course and uh, there's a huge open middle which is uh, in the real pro league it led to a lot of processes being sent out so there wasn't actually too many PVTs played on this map so it's going to be very very interesting to see how... oh of course this is Empire of the Sun I set it to the wrong map on the overlay so that was my bad but yeah um, this is Empire of the Sun and there was something like 27 PVPs played on this map I think in real Pro League during 2010 uh, before the map was taken away. There was actually a lot of people choosing to question why I put it in the tournament as it is it's seen to be relatively unbalanced but because this isn't pro players and these are Team Liquid players uh, I thought it might be interesting to see how amateur players react to the map and um, what they do to change differently uh, or what the teams do themselves as well, as uh, there's a very, very interesting set of um, strategies you can pull off on as either race. It looks like Hire's SCV has, or SCV Scout has actually got stuck because of these eggs on this ramp here. There are eggs on all the ramps up to the fourth bases, and um, he's going to go off and, luckily enough for him, scout the top base as well. It looks like Stork has, uh, has a zealot running around in his base checking out for any form of proxies, uh, this, the, the mains in this map are very very big so it's very very common to see sort of proxy plays in the main and uh, once again 
yeah, going back to what I was saying before, uh, it's interesting to have maps like this be played by amateurs, and especially in a team league format as well, as uh, it's very interesting to see what the team captains actually do. And uh, in real pro league, it led to a lot of the a lot of the captains actually sending out um, just Protoss here, which is why it got taken out of the map rotation. But uh, so far, out of all the maps that have been uh, submitted to me, we've only actually had one PvP, I think, on this map. So, a very, very interesting, interesting um, occurrence, actually. Uh, completely different how I expected it to go. I was imagining PvP would be somewhat of a mainstay again. As you can see, Haya's SCV now is going to find the other eggs, and uh, he's going to probably lose this SCV as it can't get away, he does get stuck on the gas. But uh, the Zealot of um, Stork actually moved down to try and take out this base. Or, or try and get up the ramp, should I say, and because of the wall and the marine, he was forced away. And uh, it looks like Hire is doing something incredibly interesting here. Rather than taking the forward natural, he's actually opting to take this this base in the back. It's very difficult to actually attack into as Protoss, for example, early on due to these eggs. But um, it's actually really hard to defend as well. So stuff like shuttle plays here are actually going to be really strong for Stork to do. And uh, Stork finding himself down a base already, opting to spread out units everywhere to try and watch for drops that he thinks will probably be coming due to the size of the main, only now getting a second gateway. So Hire is going to find himself in a very good position here, up uh, doing a siege expand here it looks like, siege coming, and uh, one or two siege tanks, now opting to go into a second factory so we're not going to see a uh, one factory one stop or oof style opening. and. Uh, now he's going to start mining from this um, natural, which is going to slowly give him more and more of an advantage as uh, Stork's natural nexus is only about a third of the way completed. Actually opting to add on a pylon wall here as well. It looks like Stork is very, very uh, worried about Haya's aggression. Haya so far throughout the tournaments has shown that he can be very aggressive, but it looks like in this game due to the map layout and also the size of the map he's going to be a or the way he's using the map layout to his advantage as well by taking this back base is actually going to be playing more on the defensive and is going to let Stork try and uh, try and take the reins at the start of this game but Stork is playing overly defensive here and actually finding himself in a little bit of a predicament because uh, he's letting Haya do whatever he wants and uh, Stork is going to retaliate to this, the fact that he hasn't seen higher expand yet, because of course he can't actually see past these eggs until he gets there, and uh, the only scout he has died, as well as this dragoon over here. So he thinks he's probably really far, but or far ahead, and maybe that's why he's overcommitting on the defense here, because he's completely in the dark about what um, higher is actually doing. So a very good move by Hire taking that base at the back is completely unexpected and has completely thrown off Stork. Stork is probably thinking how much or how far ahead he is and what he can do from, from here on out. But now Hire also finding himself going up to three bases does in fact have the three gas bases. So Hire is in a very good position here. It's going to be very hard for Stork to actually do any damage here without any shuttles and uh, it doesn't look like with his robotics facility only now now coming to, to finish. It's going to be a long time before he scouts this and um, Haya is going to find himself in an incredible position. Still only on two factories and pumping out tanks. He's, it's going to be very very difficult for, to actually break him from anything but shuttles now and uh, of course there is no shuttle tech coming out yet so we do have an observatory coming up now and we do actually see the first shuttle so this will be the first moment in the game that um, Stork actually has to be able to scout this out and uh, in this time due to the layout of the bases it looks like Haya using his massive tank count could even take a very very quick fourth base and uh, that's going to put him in a, an amazing position to push across the map and just uh, end end Stork before he can really take a fourth base himself because uh, due to the way they've both expanded I mean tanks are a lot better at attacking these bases on these little islands than uh, Dragoons are, for example, because tanks don't necessarily need to get up the up the ramps, which is uh, very beneficial here for Hire. Uh, we're in a little bit of a lull this game, where both players are just sort of teching up. Uh, not much is really going on. Hire's going for double armory here, which will be 
which will put him even more ahead later on in the game uh, if he can get his upgrades up. We of course don't see any forge yet for Stork, so Stork is in a position here where he's slowly getting himself further behind. And he needs to... Re there we go, the, for the first forge is going up, but his, uh, his, tech is, his tech is behind. His gateway count is only now now increasing and is actually even with the amount of factories that uh, Haya has of these three bases, so he's not really going to be able to put on any aggression. And his only saving grace is the fact that Haya hasn't chosen to be aggressive here and is just being incredibly, incredibly safe. Has got tanks at all of his bases with a turret, and uh, he's actually building a turret ring down here, so there's there's not really anything Stork can do to get into Haya's base now. And uh, Haya's just going to be happy to sit back and let Hawk, uh, Hawk, Stork try to, well, let Stork try to break up the, break up the ramps. And now uh, with Stork's, Stork's uh, observer going in, he will actually see that that base is taken, but he's not seen this other base. He does sneak past this turret that just finished, or is just about to finish. His observer's trapped, and it most likely will go down here. He does lose the observer, but he does, he does in fact scout the, um, Hire is on three base, and this is going to prompt him to move his units out to try and block this fourth base. I'd imagine the command center is now finished. Uh, Hire now flooding his factories up to five. He's going to look to take out that base, but uh, Stork, more importantly, doesn't seem to be still wanting to go on any any form of aggression. He's slowly adding on more units, and uh, as you can see, his get we count is up to three. We don't see any Reva tech or anything like that, so he can't do any real harassment. And this, this nice little turret ring, which does actually encircle two of his bases, is going to make it very difficult for Aya to actually get him with any shuttles. Uh, sorry, Stork to get him with any shuttles. And uh, it looks like Stork is now going to try and react to what he's scouted now by adding on more gateways. And look to go for a very aggressive aggressive stance in the, the next stage of this game. But uh, it may be a little bit too little too late. Unless he starts to either mass expand or do something soon. Haya's tank count is getting really high. And uh, Stork is just going to move around the map to try and scout for any extra bases. Probably try and take a peek up this ramp. But he's going to find it very difficult against these two tanks in a very, very nice position. Uh, nothing can actually get up to them to shoot them. So those eggs are going to be a perfect defense here for Haya. Especially against this few units. And um, Stork is going to find himself down a base and uh, down in unit count as well. So, Hyra is doing a very, very good job. Hyra even actually using his barracks to scout up here for any form of shell drop up here with Storm. And uh, Stork is finding himself in an increasingly, increasingly difficult position purely by being too passive throughout the game. So, Hyra, while playing incredibly passive, um, actually takes the lead, which is quite interesting. Usually the passive Terran is the one who's playing from behind, but uh, Stork hasn't really taken advantage of what he's seen, and um, scouting incredibly late by having a late observatory is going to make this increasingly difficult for him to come come back in this game. Haya now finding himself at 133 supply, goes up against the 114 of Protoss, and uh, there's still only about 7 gateways. It looks like we're moving up to yeah, 7 or 8, and it looks like uh, Stork is going to try and go into our bet tech from here. So, a very interesting predicament here. There's something attacking, so oh, uh, Stork unluckily placing one of his gateways in a bad position finds himself with some uh, stock zealots. So he's going to cut them out, cut his way through his own gateway. Meanwhile, uh, Haya is just going to continue adding on his units. He is now moving up to 2-2, two -two, I do believe. Let me just quickly check. Yeah, he is moving up to 2-2. Two -two. Stork finds himself on 1-0-0 uh, zero zero still. His second upgrade hasn't started. And uh, Stork needs to do something soon, or he's just going to find himself up against a Max Terran with a 2-2 two -two or 3-3 three -three by the time he pushes out. And uh, there's nothing, or there's going to be nothing he can actually do to stop it. Haya even being so passive into never actually sending out any any vultures to actually do any damage. And look at the amount of factories that uh, Haya now has. Haya's going to move out soon with so many units that Stork is going to find it impossible to actually come into the position in this game. Stork maybe not playing this game. Um, not playing this map before, doesn't know about this base, has only just found it with his observer. 
So uh, Stork is going to be in a very, very bad position soon. This amount of factories is just insane. I are doing a very, very good job with this macro. And, uh, and um, Stork is just finding himself up against just mass vultures over here and that's all Haya really needs. He can just continue to send out vultures and keep pumping them out. He's going to scout up here for this extra base thinking there's going to be a fourth or fifth base up here and finds nothing. Starts to lay some mines to block that off and Stork finding himself in this awkward position here with with units but no real tech. His armor tech isn't his armor tech is now finished, but uh, it doesn't look like he has an arbiter out yet, which is going to be a problem for him. And uh, these vultures are just going to be increasingly annoying. They are stuck up by these eggs, so uh, that's a unlucky move by uh, by Haya there, but it doesn't really matter. He is near maxed against 146 supply and supply blocked um, stalk. So uh, there's going to be some serious issues here coming for Stork and there's nothing he's going to be able to do about the sheer terror might that's going to be leaving Haya's base at any time. And uh, here we go, he's going to move across the map and Stork is going to have to do what he can with the units he can to try and stop this but I'm not entirely sure he's going to be able to do it without perfect micro. And uh, Haya actually opting to take a very weird route through the map is going to go straight through the middle. Uh, possibly understanding how far ahead he is. He did just scout um, scan a few times. There we go. A scan goes down. It will uncover um, Stork's army. And he's now just going to move up. Probably he may even just A move here. He has so much money. He has so many factories. And uh, his 2-2 two -two is now finished. We're going to have an engagement in the map here. Oh, in the middle of the map here. Pure vultures and uh, tanks up against dragoons and zealots. The zealots aren't even here in position to help. And uh, the Dragoons are actually just being shelled down at the moment by these Vultures with their concussive grenades. And uh, this is not looking good here. Or the Fragmentation Grenade, should I say. This is not looking good for Stork whatsoever. Stork finding himself trapped in his, his own corner of the map. Haya is going to remax again very, very quickly out of the, the sheer amount of factories he has. He, uh, he will have his vessels out shortly as well. It looks like he probably already has one. And yeah, there we go. There is two with his army that I missed just before. And uh, he's going to find himself in a position where he can actually shell down these, these gateways if he chooses to. But it looks like he's just going to move in and uh, move up. Stork is going to try and put up a defense here. He's going to move in from two angles with uh, zealots and dragoons, but it's just not enough. And uh, Stork is finding himself in a terrible, terrible position here. He's going to try and hold us off his ramp with the few units he has. But it's not going to be enough. There's just so many tanks here. There's about two control groups worth of tanks. And uh, an endless amount of reinforcements coming up across the map. And uh, Higher is going to find himself completely su you know, supply blocked here where he can't actually build anything else. And there's not really anything on the map that can kill the army he has. Stork is going to lose his third base here and uh, this is going to put him in an even, even worse position so very very well played a very nice push by higher and an insane amount of macro behind this is going to make it impossible for Stork to, gonna, uh, Stork to really do anything he's going to try and use zealot bombs here on the tanks but very very nice on siege by all the tanks is actually going to make that worthless and now all, uh, all higher needs to do is move up the move up Stork's ramp and uh, the few units he has in his main is just not going to be enough. He gets a really nice stasis down, but he really needed to stasis the ramp as uh, Haya's, Haya's units do actually move in and they're going to they're gonna get stuck on the ramp a bit, but it doesn't really matter anymore. Another Zealot Bomb does go down, but once again, Haya's army is in an unbeatable position here. 2-2, two, 3-3 two, three, three should be nearly done. Hi, oh, sorry, Stork is still on 0 one, oh, 2 one now, so Stork, uh, Stork's upgrades are back up, but his gateways are being killed. He does now have double forge, but uh, there's just not enough units here to do anything. He can't even build DTs because of these two, two vessels here over defending the skies, and uh, it looks like Stork is just holding on before he decides to tap out and leave because uh, I don't think there's really anything he can do. And GG, GG is called Stork. Sadly enough, does find himself in a really bad position throughout the entire game by being too passive and not being active enough with his scouting. And uh, just gets completely blindsided by the size of Haya's, Haya's army. And uh, that's gonna be a quick 104 um, 
a quick 104 Oz. So we're going to move on to the second game very, very shortly.